Hi everybody, uh, been really busy, got a uh, exam I have to study for, a certification exam. So haven't been doing a lot of hobby time, but I wanted to give an update on what my kind of year end challenge is gonna be. So what I really wanna get done by the end of the year is finish my Seleucid army, Seleucid successor army. So I got all these figures primed up and assembled this weekend and once I get my World War One stuff done and some more Romans done this is, right in front of you is what I really want to get done for December so we've got a Aventine miniatures heavily armored war elephant there uh, and all those figures around it are the crew figures and then the figures that are going to be on the base on the kind of skirmisher screen. This thing is uh, so awesome. And as you can see, there's a, uh, a Roman guy in the trunk. Really awesome. That's uh, The elephant is kind of a mix of uh, resin and metal. And yeah, here's the, the guys who are gonna be on the crew and then also on the base. We've got the uh, last of the Seleucid cataphracts to do. And those are gonna be really impressive. They're, these are some of my favorite miniatures ever. They're from Aventine Miniatures. I've already painted up a couple units of these. So uh, once I get these finished, we're gonna have, I think we're gonna do four units of cataphracts for the army. Uh, then we got some Cretan archers. These are uh, War Games Foundry figures. We've got um, some Thuria Four Eye. These guys are gonna be um, light infantry Thuria Four Eye. They're gonna be kind of more like skirmishers. And then we've got the Silver Shields Phalanx. So these guys are all gonna have silver shields. These were like the elite uh, unit, piked unit of the Seleucid army. I think these guys are going to be really awesome. So this is what I want to get done for the end of the year. But since my girlfriend is out of town right now, I've been able to spread out a little bit. So I've been looking at some other projects too that I want to show you. So what I've also been working on here is the Normans. So mainly just laying it, taking out inventory of what I have, laying them all out. They're all from Footsore Miniatures and they're a mix of the armored and unarmored Normans. And I was looking at the bio tapestry and there are some images of unarmored guys, but these are gonna be Normans for, you know, a regular Norman army, but they're also gonna be for like a First Crusade and Sicilian uh, Norman force. I'm gonna use them kind of interchangeably. And I kind of organized them into some units. I've gotten two units painted this year. And we're gonna add one, two, three more units of knights with six figures per unit. And these are, yeah, a mix of the unarmored and armored. And that the armored guys are gonna be the knights and then the light infantry are kind of gonna be the light cavalry, the unarmored guys are kind of going to be like the retainers uh, who kind of would actually make up the back of the formations. Uh, and then I had some extra figures. So looking at the uh, to the strongest rules, uh, army lists, the uh, Sicilian Normans, Normans have the option of taking some light cavalry. So I'm going to make one three figure light cavalry unit. And then the remaining two guys I ordered actually some more, some Arabs from Footsore, and these guys are going to go with the Arabs, and they're going to be uh, Turkopoles for, um, who are kind of like uh, horse archery type troops, like cavalry in uh, Norman, in Crusader service, in, um, in the Crusaders army. Or, you know, just kind of, they're generally kind of Easterners who fought in the Eastern cavalry fashion and they weren't as good as like the Turks, uh, the Turkomans 
the wild Turks who are hot off the step, but you know, mainly the Turkopoles, uh, which I think means son of a Turk. So Turkish inspired uh, fighters, you know, they, their goal was to kind of try and hold off the enemy as long as they could. And, um, you know, they, did, they weren't as good as the real Turks, but you know, they could kind of do the job well enough to just kind of buy time basically. And then we got some more, you know, foot sore stuff too, like uh, Bishop Odo there. Um, and that's cool, that's based off of a guy directly from the, the Bayou Tapestry. Some infantry command and crossbowmen and stuff. So that's gonna be kind of the start of the force, kind of waiting on the uh, Norman infantry from Victrix and their Dark Age archers they just announced. Probably gonna be buying, depends how many come in a set, but the Norman infantry, I really hope that's a 60 figure set. Because I'm going to be doing, you know, different permutations as Crusader Infantry, regular Norman Infantry, etc. Um, the Crusader units are going to have crossbowmen mixed in with them, because that's what they did. And, uh, yeah, the Bowmen, probably, I think it's a 24-figure set, so I'm probably going to have to buy a couple, figure, a couple sets of those to make some formed archer units. So the Normans are going to be the main project for the start of the new year once I get all the Seleucid stuff done. But at the same time as I work on the Normans, the plan is to also resuscitate uh, this ancient Greek project. So the story behind this project actually is, uh, you know, when I first got into historical wargaming, back into wargaming in general, for, you know, since I was a kid, um, in 2018, the first, I, you know, I didn't have any plans to do things, um, you know, game with the figures. I was just kind of interested in the figures. And, you know, I was like randomly searching one day and I found these, uh, you know, Victrix Greek hoplites and stuff and picked them up and painted them. And this was the first stuff I painted. And then I get, you know, I got some foundry guys uh, to go with it. But, um, you know, what happened is I realized I needed, I didn't really paint enough Greeks for a full army. And I realized I needed, um, you know, eventually I really reached a point where I was like, I really want a game, but I'm going to have to collect both sides. And at the time, there was no cheap options for like Persians to fight the Greeks. And what I really wanted to do is I wanted to do a force that forces that were going to be totally different. So I put the Greeks on hold and I decided we're going to do Macedonians versus Romans because I can get those armies cheaply for the most part in plastic and they're very different to each other. You know, I wanted contrasting armies. So the Greeks have been sitting on the back shelf, and I thought, um, you know, Greeks versus Macedonians was just going to be too samey gameplay-wise. Um, you know, just too heavy. You know, they're just too similar. That was my thinking at the time, anyways. Maybe that was just an excuse to, you know, get a new army. But I want to revisit this project and basically, yeah, build new units. Um, and we're going to have to actually repaint a lot of these guys because, you know, these were the first guys I painted, um, period, since I was like 12 years old. And I used the same paints that I used when I was 12. I found them. I, you know, I was, um, helping my dad clean up my parents' basement. And I found all the paints and I was like, uh, you know, that's kind of what triggered me to kind of get started into this stuff again is finding some of the old uh, collection in my parents basement when I was over there. Uh, so, yeah, these were painted with, uh, you know, paints that had not been used since probably like 2006. They've been sitting in my basement, sitting in my parents basement for, you know, since 2006. Uh, so, 
yeah, super dry, you know, I would, didn't really know what the heck I was doing. Um, you know, I would, I kind of just primed them and sort of dry brushed paint over there. So, you know, they're not really the best figures. So my plan is to hopefully kind of try and, you know, revitalize, resuscitate these figures. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing with the transfers, that's for sure. Um, you know, I'd never done transfers before. Um, you know, so... I think this is going to be a cool little project. I've got, you know, these these groups of hoplites. I think I still got a few on the sprue as well. Uh, we got some foundry guys, foundry hoplites, and then a, another big bag of foundry hoplites. So the plan is going to be to do Thebans, uh, mainly to fight the Macedonians uh, during Philip II's campaigns, but of course, um, you know, there's going to be, these, these can be run as more than just Thebans. I'm going to do one super deep unit um, to represent the, you know, super deep formations that the Thebans used often. And that's going to have like the Theban sacred band in it. And that's going to be the only unit that is like distinctly, distinctly Theban. Um, the rest are going to be generic hoplite units. And those can, those can be used for like the sacred wars too, like the Battle of the Crocus Field, um, which was, uh, yeah, and I, it would be cool to do a sacred wars campaign and then the, the campaign against the Thebans and Athenians, um, you know, run that kind of Philip the second campaign. Um, yeah, the, ba the sacred wars have some interesting battles, uses of hidden artillery, um, they're not very well, you know, described, but there is cool scenario potential there. So thanks for listening to my, my rambling. Uh, I'm really excited to do all that Norman, get all that Norman cavalry done and also, you know, build up these Greeks over time. I think the Greeks are going to, my goal, you know, the, the Norman cavalry in January, it'd be my goal to get you know, six figures painted a week, um, which I think is a good pace for cavalry, honestly. A cavalry take, I feel like, three times the length, at least, as an infantryman. You know, if I can bang out a unit of cavalry per week, get those all done in a month, and then uh, in February, really start to tackle these Greeks, and I think the Greek project will go fast. So, yeah. Uh, this video went a little long, but thanks for listening, and see you next time. Might be a little while before there's another update for me. That's why I wanted to just make this video quickly, uh, because I got this certification exam that is just taking all my time to study for. But hopefully I'll be back soon. My next video is probably going to be a uh, World War One showcase, because I'm like... 99.99% done with the World War One stuff. I really just need to base it at this point. Just paint the bases. So, yep. Yeah, have a great week, guys.